Rangers give up a shorthanded goal to nothing here in Philadelphia. Langevin and Deneen coming out in defense as the Flyers start from deep in their own zone. Craven to Poland. Ahead for Derek Smith. He's over the line on the right side and dumped it in around the boards. Got a hard hit from Langevin. Ooing and eyeing about that as Deneen dumps the puck into center. Chasing it is Erickson. Right on his tail is Dvorak. Carson, four Flyers move over center ice. Four on two as they cross the line. Carson couldn't make the play. Deneen took him off the puck. And this is Langevin. Ahead to Dwayne Sutter. It passes Pip. Held in. Dvorak had it stolen. And Kortko breaks out on right wing. Roger Kortko over the line. A pass to Janssen. He shoots. That just missed the target. Comes back to Deneen. Let's one go. Steered aside by Lindbergh. Johnson in the corner trying to center it in front. It was tipped high and wide. Carson picks it up. Lost it momentarily. Longin at the blue line. Into the corner for Kortko. Roger Kortko checked by Dvorak. Johnson goes back to the net. Took Dvorak down and the puck is cleared around the boards and out to center ice for Deneen. Now to Longevin. Longevin dumps it back in. Lindbergh went back at the net. Seemed to stumble and couldn't make the play. Now Wayne Sutter leaned into Dvorak. Dvorak able to hold the puck. Credit to Hackborn who's over center ice. Carson trailing as he gets into the Islander zone. Turn and then shot one that hit Potvin. Picked up by Trache. Trache goes rink wide with a pass off the boards for Bossy. Mike Bossy back to Potvin. Potvin picks up a little speed. Got over the line but Bossy was ahead of the play and it's offside. There is a break in the action here at Philadelphia where the Flyers lead the Islanders two to nothing. The car business is like pro sports. You come in first one year, people say lucky. You repeat, they talk dynasty. You win three years in a row, you're the 49 Yankees. Well, in 82, 83, and 84, Oldsmobile Cutlass was the number one nameplate in America. Will Cutlass win again in 85? We don't know. But right now, Cutlass is out front. And right now, we're giving first-rate deals on first-place cars. Cutlass Supreme and Cutlass Sierra. From the good old, good old guy. 7.09 remaining in the first period. Two to nothing for the Philadelphia Flyers. Eight straight games at home. And the Philadelphia Flyers have not lost. They build a two-goal lead on counters by Howe and Craven, who just made it three to nothing with that drive over the catching glove of Bill Smith. Dave Poulin, who had a penalty a little earlier in the first period, brings it off the crossbar, I believe. Look at this move as he steps in behind Diddick. There's the shot off the goalpost to the left of Billy Smith. And quickly, the Philadelphia Flyers make it three to nothing. Good move by Poulin. There's the wrist shot. Yes, in the National Hockey League, a wrist shot still works. Beautiful shot off the goalpost by Dave Poulin, his 25th of the season, and the captain of the Philadelphia Flyers gives them a three-goal lead. Comes at the 13-04 mark. Philadelphia already four points ahead of the Washington Capitals, trying to make it six in quick order, and virtually nailed down first place in the Patrick Division. A lot of folks didn't think they would be a contender this year. What with a young, rebuilding hockey team, but under general manager Bobby Clark and their coach Mike Keenan, they have really had an outstanding year. Gord Deneen starting out of the far corner. Deneen into the center ice zone, fires it from the blue line. Kicked out by the left pad of Kelly Lindbergh, and there's Zezel around the glass. Comes to the blue line and outside the line where Potvin tried to give it to LaFontaine. That didn't work. Brian Prop gets it ahead. Zezel over the Islander blue line. Peter Zezel put it right on LaFontaine's stick. That's LaFontaine dumped it into center. Marsh was there on the flyer defense. Is checked by Flatley, but recovered in time. Heard it in to Potvin. To LaFontaine, who was standing. Here's Pop over the line. He is checked by Pearson. Loose pucks and a silo shoots. Smith makes the save. Potvin slaps it, but not out. Crossman's drive is blocked and covered up by Bill Smith. Philadelphia firing away. A break in the action with the Flyers leading the Islanders 3 to nothing. This buds to everyone who tackles the changes and challenges of that new promotion. This buds for you. There's no one else who for you that distinctively clean crisp taste that says Budweiser for all you do yeah, 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 yeah. This one's for you. 
Stephon Pearson goes to the penalty box. Crossman took a shot from the point position. Pearson, tangling Peter Zezel up in front of the net, gets the penalty for holding. Will Philadelphia get a power play leading three to nothing with five minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first period? Tonelli and Trache have broken into the flyer zone. Trache's backhander scores on a shorthanded situation only nine seconds after Pearson had gone off. And that is Brian Trache's first goal in the last 16 games. His 26th goal overall play right here being held from behind. He let go with a backhand shot that got in behind Pelly Lindbergh. Good play by John Tonelli. Here's how it developed. Tonelli across the blue line holding the puck then gave it to Brian Trache. He was being checked closely from behind by Thomas Erickson, but not closely enough. And his backhand shot, big goal for the Islanders, takes away the three-goal lead, makes it now two. But they did it in a shorthanded situation. So the teams have traded shorthanded goals already here in the first period. Earlier, Craven scored to make it two to nothing on a shorthanded situation for Philadelphia. 13th shorthanded goal of the year for the New York Islanders. Down three to one. Dvorak has dumped it in around the boards. Botan goes for it. Got it to Roger Kortko. Clears it the length of the ice. 14-26, the time of Trache's goal. Dvorak around the boards for Crossman. Played it to the blue line, and now to center ice comes Hessel. Slowed up from behind. Gets into the Islander zone with a pass for Prop. Over to Crossman. Crossman parks on the boards, fed it to Prop, who covered at the right point. Out of Crossman, in behind the net. In a silo, leads it for Crossman. It came off the boards very strangely and bounced to the side of the net and recovered by Deneen. Or Deneen carries it into center. Dumps it in wide of Kelly Lindbergh. It'll be picked up by Sinasalo. 55 seconds remaining in the flyer penalty. Here's Bergen over the line. Langevin slowed him up. Bergen recovers the puck. Centered it in front off the Dean stick. Howe comes in deep. Mark Howe checked by Deneen. Bergen gets a stick on the loose puck. Dumps it out in front to the blue line. McCrimmon lets it go. And that's one off Langevin. Picked up by Bergen. Back to the point to McCrimmon. Over to Ron Sutter. Long pass. And the shot blocked by Langevin. And it was fired again by Bergen. And just wide. Bounces into the center right zone. Janssen moved up on McCrimmon. Ron Sutter handed it back to the Flyer defenseman. Brad McCrimmon over the line. Cuts to the right side and poked it into the corner. Gordy Lane is back. Fires it high down into the Flyer zone. Ten seconds left in Pearson's penalty. Teams have shared shorthanded goals in the first period. And the Islanders are chased back into their own ends. Fifth to Lane up the middle of the ice. Brad Marsh gets a stick on it just as Pearson has sprung from the penalty box. Marsh pulled it away from Trache. Dumps it into the Islander zone. Back for the puck is Bossy. Around to the left side for Trache. Ryan Trache across to Mike Bossy at center right. Bossy over the flyer line with Tonelli trailing. Bossy got taken off the puck by Marsh. And here come the Flyers. The pass just out of the reach of Craven. He and Deneen go to the corner together. Craven put it out in front of drive. Changed direction as Crossman moved in. John Tonelli rubbed out on the boards. A shot from the far wing is grabbed and held by Bill Smith. We'll take a break here. The score now is the Flyers three, the Islanders one. What a bummer. Another engine we can't mess up. How could Mobile do this to me? Yeah. Make their super unleaded gasoline that good. It's really powerful. High octane is so... <laughs> Knocking and pinging is becoming a lost art. Yeah. I just hope nobody else finds out how good their gasoline is. How could they find out? Mobile could make a television commercial. Nah! nah. There's the situation. The Flyers with three minutes and eight seconds left in the opening period. Have a three to one lead over the visiting New York Islanders. Pearson around the boards for Bossy who couldn't get a stick on it. Al set it up for Derek Smith, who was too well covered, and the Islanders clear the puck to center ice. Here's Mark Howe. Over to McCrimmon. Now to Pullen at center ice. Pullen flips it in between the Islander defense. It bounced wide, and Bill Smith banks it into the corner for Trotche. Up to John Tonelli. Tonelli's pass went off Trotche and recovered by Howe for Philadelphia. Mark Howe dumps it down into the Islanders' zone. This will be called back for icing as Pearson touches up. 
kind of a wild first period, Jig, when you think about the shorthanded situations. Also, Philadelphia with two power plays in this period so far. They haven't had a shot on goal on either one. Good penalty killing by the Islanders in this game so far, limiting Philadelphia to no shots when they've had a man advantage. The Islanders are out shooting Philadelphia 9 to 8 in this first period. They got behind by three goals this afternoon. Dug themselves a hole. We'll see how they can battle back if they can. And a shorthanded goal by Brian Trotche at 14-26. That's a big lift for the Islanders. Trailing three to nothing going into the dressing room is not going to make them feel very good. Now Cortko out with Henry and Dwayne Sutter as the Flyers play it around the boards and into the center ice zone. Deneen trying to get in front of Tuckett did. Ackborn trailed, picked up the puck and thus offside. Brian Trotche's goal, his fifth shorthanded goal of the season, tying him with Mark Messier for third place in shorthanded goals. Only Wayne Gretzky with 10 and Brian Prop of the Philadelphia Flyers with six have more. Bob Bourne holds the club record seven back in 1980-81. And you just had a look at Rick Tockett, fine young rookie with the Philadelphia Flyers. That's Len Hatborn handling the puck. It went off Carson and is covered by Bill Smith. Don't miss your chance for the Film Awards, the movie award special. Here, you pick the winner. Join host Mariette Hartley and James Brolin for a star-filled evening with special guests Ava Gardner, Monday night at 9, right here on Channel 9. And our next telecast for you, the Islanders and the Quebec Nordiques on Thursday, the 28th of March from the Coliseum in Quebec City. It'll be at 7.30 Eastern time, by the way. Benin's pass was deflected by Carson. Longevin had trouble getting it ahead, finally did. And Cortko goes rink wide to Dwayne Sutter. Fires went off right wing that missed the net. Rick Tockett's loaded up. Longevin takes control, fed it to Deneen. Deneen dumping it into the center ice zone. Marsh knocked it down with a high stick, and then it was picked up by Tockett. The play was called. Well, we had a special uh, hello to be handed out. These people, uh, they wanted to say hello to Hastings on Hudson, New York. They want to say hello to the whole area, I suppose. <laughs> Dave and the Finnegans. Well, Finnegan fits in with today. Sure do. Said thanks a lot. Go Islanders. All right. LaFontaine, Flatley, and Thomas Johnson up front on defense. It's Lane on the right side. Potvin on the left. Flatley and Marsh collided. Flatley went down heavily. Took a poke at Marsh as he came back to pick up the puck, and now they go at it. And Flatley retaliating after the hard hit between he and Marsh. Not going to be one of the tough guys in the fighting department. Well, he's so strong, Jags. He may not be as quick as Flatley, but he's so strong. Both of them. Flatley, of course, extremely strong on his side. But they're definitely mad at each other. I'm glad I'm not in between. Mm. Very wisely, John D'Amico and Ron Finn have waited for their moment. It arrives now, and in they go. The two linesmen. It's Ron Finn. It's Bob Hodges, excuse me. First outbreak in a game, something the players don't necessarily look forward to, but these two decided they were mad enough at each other. Let's see if we can pick up where all of this got underway. Here comes Marsh. There's, oh, look at that stick along the side of the head. Knocked flatly down with a high stick. He cross-checked him along the side of the face. That's enough to make anybody mad. There's a swing at a Marsh by Pat Flatley, and you know what he's got in his mind now. He's stalking him like an animal. Look at here. Marsh knows it, too. He would expect, I suppose, anybody that plays with the intensity of a Patrick Flatley to come back after him. That was a cross-check right in the face by Marsh on Patrick Flatley. And Flatley is drawing a slashing penalty plus a fighting penalty. Marsh gets only a five-minute fighting penalty from the Islanders upset. I don't blame them, Jiggs. That is a... There wasn't anybody in the building didn't see the cross check. Let's take another look. Now that's Slash, he kept the stick down. But that's not how this all started. So that anybody that tuned in late, maybe 30 seconds late, flatly, if he wanted to, could have taken that stick across the bridge of Marsh's nose, but he didn't. He hit him along the arms down lower. 
in retaliation, setting him up for the fight. What he's saying is, here's the stick back, but I'm giving it to you low, but I'm coming in with the fists, and that's just exactly what he did. But prior to that, Brad Marsh cross-checked flatly right across the face. We didn't show that the second time. I wonder if we will get a chance to see it later on, but the players in the penalty box flatly gets a slashing penalty. There's no question. Did Marsh get the uh, high sticking? No. That's what I was trying to make the point. That's not a homer statement being in Philadelphia either. That's just exactly what happened. And as Eddie pointed out, we did not see it a second time around, what Marsh did to upset Flatley to begin with. Bouncing puck is grabbed and squatted out of there by Smith. Didn't get it outside the blue line. Crossman into Prop. Ryan Prop. Holding it at the edge of the circle. Centered one in front. Zezel backhanded it wide. Sinisalo out of the far corner with Prop set up in front. It was not open, and Prop Van is knocked it loose. Now Zezel from back of the net. Out in front, and a drive. Missed the net as Sinisalo closed in. Lane took his man down back of the play, and out comes Keller. But they pull it off the line, gets over the line, giving it to Janssen, who dumps it in deeper. 43 seconds remaining in the first period here at Philadelphia. Doug Crossman carries it in the middle of the ice. Over the Islander line, went to the right side, and that's Bossy stepping in front of Sinisalo. Mike Bossy clears it. It goes off the defenseman, and Erickson has to come back to center ice. Now to Crossman, who shoots it into the far corner. That's Longevin chasing it. Goes up the boards, down into the center ice zone for Mike Bossy. Bossy dropped it back. Trache couldn't pick it up. Deneen does. 40 Deneen. Turning and center ice, gave it to Bossy, comes over the line, cranks up the slap shot, off the right pad, uh, Kelly Lindbergh. Three seconds left as Howe circled the net and starts out, that's going to do it. First period comes to a close with Philadelphia leading the New York Islanders by a score of three to one. The Islanders outshot them in the period, but after 20 minutes of play at the Spectrum on St. Patrick's Day in the afternoon, your score is the Flyers three, the Islanders one. Back with a recap right after these messages. Germany, Britain, Japan, Sweden, France, Italy. You have questioned America's ability to create a high-performance luxury automobile. Here's America's answer. The 1985 98 Oldsmobile. 98? Front-wheel drive. Multi-port fuel-injected engine. Four-wheel independent suspension. The 1985-98. Now, that's America's answer. There must be a bank out there with the financial services I need and the personal service I want. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. I'll show you how to earn bonus yields on CDs. I'll help you lock in a low loan rate. I can help you expand, even start your business. And I promise that at NatWest USA, you'll always receive personal attention. So, from all of us, welcome. welcome. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. New York Telephone charges less than any other communications company for 95% of all calls made in your regional calling area. Principal. And that area covers a big part of your world. New York, You're a grandpa. Long Island, about the Westchester, the Rockland and Putnam counties, and even parts of Orange County and Connecticut. So remember, for 95% of all calls in your regional calling area, we cost the least. New York lives on New York Telephone. My wife Susie works with some beautiful women, but for beautiful skin, no one beats my Susie. And that's why I wrote Ivory about her. I do get compliments on my skin even for my models. So when one of them asks me what I use, I tell them ivory. Ivory's not made with a lot of additives. It cleans gently, naturally. Good food and exercise are important too, but ivory's a basic. Healthy looking skin, ivory can help you have it too. When someone asks me, I tell them ivory. After 20 minutes at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the Flyers, with the best home ice record in the National Hockey League, are leading the New York Islanders by a score of three to one. Shots on goal in the period, however, by the Islanders 10, by the Flyers 9. And here's the way the scoring went. Brad McCrimmon gets his eighth goal of the season from Howe and Zezel at the 722 mark. Some discussion on it, but it was McCrimmon's shot from the point after Howe had blasted one off the goal post and made it one to nothing. Philadelphia scored a shorthanded goal with Pullen in the penalty box. Murray Craven gets his 23rd goal of the year 
Flyers 17th shorthanded. Sinisalo the assist at the 10-13 mark after Smith had made the original save. Then at 13-04, Dave Pullen from Smith and McCrimmon. Pullen's 25th of the season, and all of a sudden, Philadelphia were up 3 to nothing. But with Pearson off for holding, Brian Trotche would score his fifth shorthanded goal of the season, his 26th overall. It came at 14-26, and the Islanders were on the score sheet. Trotche from Tonelli, 3-1 to one at the end of the first period. Late in the period, Flatley and Marsh mixing it up. Flatley drawing seven minutes in penalties. Marsh with five. And that penalty, the minor penalty against Pat Flatley, sets up the third Philadelphia power play of this game. For the most part, even Steven, except in the goal scoring, there is some good hitting, some good goaltending at either end. The defense uh, making a couple of mistakes, but uh, really, Bill Smith without too much that he could do on a couple of those flyer goals. Eddie? Some of the mistakes being made in front of him, of course, have been costly. The one particularly, uh, when Poulin scored, Jiggs, he made a fine move, but defensively, the Islanders looking back, if they look at that tape, I would see that it was a big mistake was made by the Islander defense, allowing him to get into that position to let the shot go. He put it off the goal post, but those are the kinds of things that have been plaguing the Islanders all season long. They make one mistake, and it's in the net, and that's the kind of a thing that they have not seen and had not have to contend with over the past years. They've been getting much better over the past few weeks, but now with the ranks depleted again by Brent Sutter not being there, you have to remember that when Brent Sutter plays, he has the puck a lot of the time, so when he doesn't have it, the other team's going to have it, in this case, Philadelphia, so they're taking good advantage of the fact that they are in possession of the puck, forcing the Islanders to make mistakes. Brings that strength down the middle to three players, Trache, LaFontaine, and, of course, Roger Kortko. I wonder a little bit what Bill Torrey's thinking is. Now, granted, it's maybe not the time to call up somebody for a game today, knowing that Springfield has a game this evening and it played last night. But down the road, with nine games left in the season following today's game, what do the Islanders do for center right strength? There isn't too much more they can do, Jiggs. Uh, they've, uh, they've gone about as far as they can go. They can bring up some other players from Springfield as to whether or not they'll be that much of a help, or do they rely on moving players around? Uh, and Anders Kaller, Thomas Johnson has already been moved around a little bit. I'm kind of thinking on your line this morning, talking uh, at breakfast, you were saying, uh, I'll bet the Islanders wish they'd have put Wayne Merrick's name on the list of players that they could possibly draw from. He would be a big help to the Islanders right about now, particularly getting ready to go into a playoff, even though he hadn't played, but that's all hypothetical. The Islanders are going to have to go with what they have, and they're going to have to get a little bit more from everybody to ki try and compensate. Name just popped into my mind, too, and we've seen him play center ice. In fact, as a junior, he was a centerman, and that is John Tonelli. But when, how do you move him off the left wing when he, he's your only healthy <laughs> he's, left winger? He's the only healthy left winger. It's not really easy to do that because it only confuses things that much more. You're going to have to bring players in as they have been doing to play the left side until they get, you know, maybe a Bob Bourne back, which probably would be just before the playoffs. Clark Gillies, he's somewhat on a day-to-day -day basis. He's been skating, but his ankle still hasn't uh, hasn't gained the strength that it's going to take for him to play. And, of course, Matt Saline. We can't forget about him because he's been a big part of this Islander team in a spots uh, duty job uh, for all the years he's been here. Well, on another note, while the Flyers lead the Islanders 3-1 to one at the end of one period, we're watching a couple of brothers here this afternoon. Of course, the Islander brothers of Brent and Dwayne Sutter separated because of the injury to Brent last evening. Philadelphia with Rich and Ron. The Twins are not the only brothers in the National Hockey League. There's a rich history. And we'll have a feature on that coming up as we return to the Spectrum, where at the end of one period, your score is the Philadelphia Flyers 3 and the New York Islanders 1. What does it take to excel? It takes speed, reliability, economy. It takes express mail next day service from the post office. We'll deliver your urgent packages overnight. And our two pound pack is just 1075. About half what most others charge. And when you need it there tomorrow, we deliver. Express mail service. We deliver excellence for less. Last year, I put my money in CDs and money market funds, and I did well, but now I'm paying for it in taxes. I could have gotten almost the same interest from a Nuveen tax-free bond fund and not paid a penny in federal, state, or city taxes on it. Well, this year, I'm calling Nuveen. It's not what you earn, it's what you keep. For information on Nuveen tax-free bond funds, call your broker or 800-228-3131. And what's so special about Computerland? There's only one. They know how to help. Come on. 
Ask about our free software offer at Computerland. Get a fully automatic infographic software package, a $395 value, free when you buy a Data Products 8000 series color printer. Data Products printers. Nobody puts ideas on paper so many ways. There's only one. Number one. For the participating Computerland dealer nearest you, call 800-258-1386. I got the same card as you, Coburn. Huh? Oh, that's nice. You don't have to be a big cheese to own a MasterCard. I know. The same card you bop around the south of France with, I use to buy wool. Wool? So you're not as hotsy totsy as you think, Mr. Tinseltown. May I buy you a drink? Anytime, Jimbo. Only Budget gives you this exciting offer in a rental car. We're giving away airline tickets. Rent a car five times, two days each time, and we'll give you a ticket to anywhere United flies in the continental U.S. Or rent ten times, and you can fly to Hawaii. You can even fly to Europe on Northwest Orient. Take off on Western or Piedmont as well. You get more than just a car at Budget. We give you an airline ticket, too. Interestingly enough, in the National Hockey League, there have been, and there are many brother combinations. Sometimes the brothers face each other on the ice. The classic confrontation of brother against brother had to be that of the Espositos. Phil, the all-star scorer, and Tony, the all-star goaltender. This was more than brother against brother and man against man. It was Hall of Famer against Hall of Famer. Sometimes little brother Tony won out. And on other occasions, big brother Phil had the upper hand. Lead pass, Esposito a breakaway. Off to Ev Anderson, shot, save, rebound! Oh, Anderson. Beautiful play, and a breakaway. And Phil Esposito beats brother Tony to make it 4 nothing. One of the most illustrious combinations which saw brothers on the same team had to be the Richards. Older brother Maurice, or as he was better known, the Rocket, was the legendary scorer, but it was younger brother Henri, who was the model of consistency. He played 20 years in the NHL, all of them with Montreal. During that time, he played on 11 Stanley Cup championship teams, a feat no other player has matched. Later on, the NHL had a number of outstanding brother combinations. There were the Mahovliches, Frank and Peter. Frank was the scorer, notching 533 goals in his 17 years in the league. Peter was the masterful center, playing on four Stanley Cup championship teams for the Montreal Canadiens. Then there were the Hulls in Chicago, Dennis and Bobby. Together, they combined for 913 goals during their careers. Bobby leading the way with 610. It was Bobby Hull who set the standard for today's scorer, the 50-goal plateau, which he reached on five different occasions. You can't talk brothers without talking Sutter's. Dwayne plays for the New York Islanders with brother Brent. They team up against Brian of the St. Louis Blues. And the surprise of the family is Daryl of the Chicago Blackhawks. The twins, Ron and Rich, are both property of the Philadelphia Flyers, but Rich is in the minors now, which leaves only five Sutters in the NHL. Now, there is a set of twins in hockey, another set. They play at separate ends of the continent. Peter Sundstrom of the New York Rangers and Patrick of the Vancouver Canucks. There are also two combinations of brother threesomes. They are the feisty hunters. They're all a bit cantankerous, like to mix it up. Those hunters, Dave of Edmonton, Dale of Quebec, and Mark of Montreal. And the Stastnys, Marion, Anton, and Peter. They may very well be the most talented brother combination ever. Certainly, they are the most potent offensive brothers line in the NHL. Peter is considered the runner-up behind only Wayne Gretzky as the most explosive center in the league. Here comes Peter. A lot of moves. Tries to go out over the line. Does. Moves for a shot. Score! Broke off the right pad of Peter's second goal of the night. Peter Stastny. Power play goal. And he makes it 2-0. Another NHL brother combination, the Courtnalls, Russ of the Toronto Maple Leafs and Jeff of the Bruins. He and his brother Russ had the pleasure of each scoring a goal in the same game in Toronto this year. There have been many brother combos in the NHL, and the family traditions may continue for a long time. 
as there are others doing well in the juniors and colleges and even Pee Wee. Brothers in the National Hockey League was produced at WSBK in Boston and our thanks to the folks at TV 38 for the use of their feature this afternoon. After one period, the Flyers leading the Islanders 3-1 to one, will return to the Spectrum in Philadelphia following these messages. This buds for everyone who keeps things rolling on the mighty Mississippi. Break away bars, break away bars, please respond. Let's get them. Yes, tonight, Golding, we're right below here and we all our way out. I'll come around on the port side and bump her there. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. When you rent one way from most car rental companies, there are strings attached. Like the drop-off charge at the end of the line. The one you pay to help get their car back. At National, there are no strings or mileage charges. Because we have a whole fleet of cars available for one-way rentals. And they're just $10 a day more than our regular low daily rates. So, the choice is yours. Rent one way or the other. National Car Rental. A way to go one way. You're about to see a productive business person turn into someone who can't talk, can't be heard, can't communicate anything to anybody because he's entering his car. But now, 9X makes possible a car phone that's as easy to use as your desk phone with cellular technology backed by Bell Experience. So you can enter your car without leaving the business world behind. 9X Mobile Communications. Hi. Hi. Guess what? What? I'm taking you out to dinner. <laughs> Are we celebrating something? Well, I just got an American Express card and I want to break it in. Great. I hear you can use it to take your husband to Paris. I never heard that. Greece? You have a vivid imagination. <laughs> Maybe you should get the American Express card. You're beautiful when you're buying me dinner. You're really pushing your luck. The American Express card. It's part of a lot of interesting lives. Guests on New York Islanders hockey receive from Fortunoff, the source, a Seiko quartz watch. See Seiko's winning combination of quartz accuracy and unique styling at Fortunoff, the source. Seiko setting the standard for the world for the future. At the end of one period, it's Philadelphia 3, the New York Islanders 1. Good first period action, lots of action. And McCrimmon, McCrimmon scored the first goal at 7.22 after Howe hit the goal post and went back to the other point on the right side. McCrimmon, with his eighth, made it one to nothing. Howe and Ziesel assisting on the goal. And then penalties started to play a part. Poulin's in the penalty box, and the Philadelphia Flyers are a man short. They spring it loose here, getting in behind the defense, and Poulin with this shot. A good wrist shot off the goal post to the left of Billy Smith. A rising wrist shot made it two to nothing. And Poulin scored, I should say, that was Poulin's goal to make the score three to nothing. And here the Islanders with Pearson in the penalty box and a pass from John Tonelli to Brian Trache. And in the net with a backhand shot, Pelly Lindbergh looking like he made a mistake. Obviously, he feels he did, but that was the goal that gave the Islanders their one and only goal of the first period. John Tonelli assisting on the shorthanded goal by Brian Trache at 14-26. So it went McCrimmon and Craven, Poulin to make it 3-0, and then Brian Trache scoring to make it 3-1 at 14-26, his 26th of the season. Nicholas, Crenshaw, Ballesteros, and Watson are just a few of the world's greatest golfers competing in the USF and G Golf Classic this afternoon, right after the Islanders game, right here on Channel 9. Nicholas, Crenshaw, Ballesteros, Watson, wow. No We're going to be, no, no, not yet. No Westfall. <laughs> I didn't there, qualify. Huh? I missed, I missed the cut. <laughs> what have got the handicap down to right about oh. now? <laughs> well, I'll tell you. Right now, it's a... I mean, I, other, other than me being a handicap, yeah, what, no, <laughs> what no, are the numbers? <laughs> oh, let's see. I think it was... I, I'm losing money at four. That's what it's at. Yeah, okay. All right. 
They've added an assist to Gord Lane on the goal by Brian Trache, and it now reads Trache from Tonelli and Lane at 1426. You can still get a copy of the New York Islanders yearbook. This year's edition, along with a full-color photo of each of your favorite Islanders, includes a special 12-page supplement commemorating the Islanders' 12 years in the NHL. To get a copy, send a check or money order for $6 to Islanders Yearbook, Sports Programs Incorporated, 4100 Palisade Avenue, Union City, New Jersey, 07087. Flatley is in the penalty box, 31 seconds remaining, and a slashing call. Philadelphia with a man advantage, and they get control from the faceoff. Crossman over to Erickson. Johnson moves up on him. Keller is the other forward at the moment with Lane and Potvat on defense. Erickson played it to the left side. Zezel dropped it to the blue line. That's Crossman moving in deeper. Goes back of the net and Lane knocked it away from him. Crossman with it again. Zezel trying to come out of the corner with the puck. Holds on to it at the top of the circle. Goes in a little deeper. Can't find anybody open. And played it rink wide. Crossman gets a stick on it. Flatley as or at least the penalty has expired and Henry comes out to replace him flatly remains for another five minutes with a fighting penalty and Lane has fallen on top of the puck in the Islander end of the ice. Jake this is the first game that Brent Sutter has missed this season. Only John Tonelli has played in all 71 Islander games so far. No Islander played in all 80 games last year. Greg Gilbert had 79. Islanders 0 for 1 on the power play in the first period. Flyers 0 for 3 now that Flatley's penalty is over. Yeah, you talk about games played and games missed. You look at the Islander lineup this year, the injuries. Well, it all started really with Ken Borrell needing knee surgery during training camp, and it just went south from there. McCrimmon has hammered the puck in from the blue line. Brutalier with it back of the net. Around to the right side to Bossy. It went off his stick. Picked up by Howell. That's a good. It skipped off Trache and why? John Tonelli takes over here on the left way. Tonelli trying to get it away from Ron Sutter. Rich Sutter, rather. Number 15, who's out with Derek Smith and Poulin. And the Islanders have cleared it off the boards and down into the flyer zone. Icing was waved off, so McCrimmon hustled back. Put it right on Bossy's stick, and his shot was blocked. First off, McCrimmon and then Lindbergh able to cover up on it. Fine save by Kelly Lindbergh as Bossy stepped in, intercepted an errant pass by the Philadelphia Flyers defenseman, McCrimmon. There's Bossy stepping in, taking the puck, gets time, tees it up, rips it, looking for the top right-hand corner. Kelly Lindbergh makes the save, moving out quickly on Bossy's shot. Now the face-off to the left of Pelly Lindbergh as you look at Pat LaFontaine lining up for this draw. Now 20 years of age in his rookie season. Played at the end of last season with the Islanders and of course the playoffs. Talk about injuries. His was illness knocking him out of the lineup for 10 games with mononucleosis earlier this season. Greg Gilbert missing his ninth game after that knee injury. Clark Gillies sitting out his 20th game of the year. Bob Bourne missed a couple of games earlier. It's now 26 games since he was injured in Los Angeles. He goes on and on. That list of injuries and aches and pains. But every team has them, and we watch Johnson comes over the line, let the shot go, and it went off the defenseman, Dvorak. Bonjamin recovers at center ice. Now to Johnson. Johnson is playing left wing. The pass to Dwayne Sutter into LaFontaine. He's rubbed out on the boards as Dvorak cut up with him. LaFontaine trying to knock it away from Bergen. It was underneath LaFontaine and then pried loose. Dvorak checked by Dwayne Sutter. Crossman goes after the puck. Doug Crossman feeds it ahead and it's center ice. Bergen got it to Ron Sutter. Dumps it in around the board. There's Bergen centering one that's tipped. Comes off the boards at center ice. Johnson reaches for it. Thomas Jonkin gets over the flyer line. Let's it go. Lindbergh made the glove save. Then he likes to cover up as Wayne Sutter moved in on top of the net. A break in the action. Two minutes, ten seconds gone. A little scuffle in front of the net. Nothing going to develop by looks of things. We'll step out. The Flyers lead the Islanders three to one.
For people concerned about the cost of getting from one point to another, Eastern Airlines announces a way to make ends meet with Eastern's new Super Saver Fares. Now fly from New York, Newark to Atlanta for only $79 or to San Diego for only $129. In fact, all our low Super Saver Fares are between $79 and $129. There's a cancellation penalty and you have to buy tickets 30 days in advance. So if you really want to make ends meet, call Eastern or your travel agent and get complete details. Well, hockey's always been a game where you're allowed vocally to display your displeasure and not get penalized, unless it's with the referee, of course. Dwayne Sutter having a few words with Pelly Lindbergh. And who should come right to the rescue of Rin Lindbergh, at least pick up the conversation, but Ron Sutter. Brother against brother. Verbal battle, at least. The puck at the flyer line. Howe playing it back into his own zone. McCrimmon has to chase it. Carson takes the turn in the far corner as McCrimmon waits for somebody to come to the right side. Directing traffic with the motion of the head. Nice from watching him close. And Carson pumped it off the boards of an off lane skates to Cortco. Now and Cortco in a battle for it. Overcomes Anders Keller in front to Nystrom and he couldn't get it onto the stick. This is Brad McCrimmon down the left side. Over the Allender line, McCrimmon goes in deep, made the play across, and was blocked in the goal mouth. Now McCrimmon battles for it back of the net. Smith down, recovers his balance as McCrimmon tries to center one. Caller turned him around. The puck goes loose. Pocket centers. That's cleared by Cortko. Held in on this right side. Hackborn got it to the corner. Comes out in front, and Carson is dragged down. Play goes on. Up comes Cortko with a pass to Nystrom. Nystrom over the line. Can't get around McCrimmon. McCrimmon left it momentarily, then has cleared it into center. We get a break for the Flyers. Across the line, Carson, a centering attempt. In deep is Tockett, back to the blue line. Crossman fires one chest high. Smith dives on top of it after making the save. Well, lots of excitement anyway, end to end, as both teams continue to skate hard. Billy Smith coming up as Crossman let the shot go. He got it up very high. Smith took it off the chest protector, and as the puck bounced forward, and then down, grabbed it. Let's take a look at some of the action. Philadelphia, the Flyers coming close right here. A lot of people still booing, thinking that Gord Lane should have been getting a penalty as he decked the forward for Philadelphia. Backborn turning, passing. Here's the shot by Crossman a moment ago. Look how high he got it. Billy Smith jumping in the air. There's the puck out in front as he covers on it. Now Rich Sutter out on right wing for the Flyers, handles the puck, fires one, that missed the target. Marsh, who's come out of the penalty box from the left point, fired Smith the save. Those puck ends up back of the net. Rich Sutter tied up by Trache, and there's Pearson playing it deeper for John Tonelli. Lifts it high in the air into the center ice zone. It's picked up by Mike Bossy. Waits for some help to arrive, played it rink wide. Tonelli stepped in around Marsh. Out comes Lindbergh to clear it into the center ice area. It rolls just wide of the Islander net. Smith leaving it for Boudelier. Marsh has finished serving his fighting penalty. Flatley is still in the box, but the teams are at sixes side. Dersan handling the puck for the Islanders. Gave it to Paul Boudelier. Now to Trache at center ice. Off his stick, picked up by Rich Sutter. Dumps it in and then goes for a rest as Smith gives it to Boudelier. Flyers in the middle of changes. In a silo coming out and handles the puck. Shot it off referee Bob Myers. And right to Bossy. Now to Trache at center ice. Trache shot it off Erickson at the flyer blue line. That's Brad Marsh up the left side. Flyers come over the line. Zezel taking the pass, then dropped it back, and Smith made the save in the long shot. Pat LaFontaine takes a hit as he sprung the puck loose into the center ice zone. And it'll be called back for icing as Dvorak hustles back. We've played the first five minutes of the second period. The score remains. Flyers three, Islanders one. If you're buying a car this year, plug this into your computer. Designation, Calais from Oldsmobile. Built at one of the world's most computerized and robotically advanced plants. Tested for fit against a mathematical database and tested for performance over two million miles. Designation, Calais. Price, affordable. Designation, Calais from Oldsmobile. A car with enough high technology to excite a computer. Test drive it today. From your good old, good old guy.
Face off to the right of Bill Smith, deep in the Islanders' zone. Zezel and LaFontaine on the draw, and the Islanders got control of the puck. That's scored Deneen. Up to LaFontaine. It was broken up by Prop, and now goes rink wide for Langevin. Out to Janssen, to LaFontaine. And a step on Prop gets over the line, coming in on goal. He shoots off the goal post. There'll be a penalty to Philadelphia. Zezel gets control of the puck now, and the Islanders will have a bad advantage. They're not going to cheer the fact that they got a penalty, but Pat LaFontaine showing good speed, good balance as he gets the feet apart. He's a good skater. Here's he gets the jump. Look at the traffic he's trying to get through. He finally broke loose enough to get a shot away. He's in the clear, taken down from behind. I'll oh, give him a penalty shot. Come on, Mr. Myers. He was loose. It hit the goal post. It's not considered a shot on net. Why not give him a penalty shot? And it'll be a two-minute minor for hooking on that man, Brian Prop, called at the 521 mark. Flyers out shooting the Islanders at this stage of the game, 13 to 12, and leading by a score of 3 to 1. Earlier this season, in the first five games, the Islanders had outscored Philadelphia 11 to 4. Here this afternoon, the Flyers take a 3 to 1 lead in the first period. In the five previous games, Philadelphia had dominated in the second period, outscoring the Islanders 9 to 6. The Islanders had won the third periods 8 to 4, and we've had only the one overtime that resulted in a win at least, and that was the Philadelphia goal. Oh, that shot by Pearson got through and went off the post to the right of Lindbergh. Pat LaFontaine redirected it, Jiggs. Now Smith making the save off Brad Marsh, who drilled one to the blue line. So the Islanders start from deep in their own zone. Poffin around to Janssen. Over to Stefan Persson. Persson off the boards. It'll be picked up by Janssen. Backs it ahead for Dwayne Sutter. Comes in off right wing. Shot one. Lindbergh makes the save. Backs into the goal crease and held on to it. From a sharp angle, Dwayne Sutter's shot gets up high. Lindbergh has no trouble handling it. A moment ago, though, Pat LaFontaine wins the faceoff. He wins the faceoff back to the point. Here's the shot by Stephon Pierce on that stick. Pat LaFontaine, watch the puck. Here it comes off the goalpost. No, wouldn't hit and go in. It's got to hit and go out. That's the rub of the green. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of green and all that. <laughs> Good shift by Pat LaFontaine, Jake. He's going to have to play at his best and, and then improve from there. He's going to help the Islanders now with Brent Sutter out. We watch Thomas Janssen handling the puck, giving it to Tonelli, right back to Janssen, into Trotje, to Tonelli, to Janssen. Janssen faked the shot, got it to Popan, to Janssen, who fired on the fly, and it bounced off Pullen and into center ice. Popan came back to knock it off the boards, over to John Tonelli, dropped it in over the line. Cleared by McCrimmon, up the middle comes Pullen, shot from the blue line, goes wide of Bill Smith's goal crease area, and Popan sends Trotje out on the left side. Rache across to Tonelli. Out of Bossy. Tonelli heads for the front of the net. Bossy backhands it to the corner. In goes Trache to Tonelli. Tonelli took the man, got the puck to Trache. Backed in front, couldn't hold on to it, and Pullen has cleared it down the ice. Good defensive move by Brad McCrimmon as he checked Brian Trache, loosening the puck up. Now 40 seconds remaining in the Islander power play. Janssen comes over center ice. Across the flyer line. Left the puck for Tonelli. Into Thomas Janssen. Back to Tonelli. Tonelli to the top of the circle, shoots, and that missed the net. High off the glass and down into the Islander zone. You've got to get it on the target, Eddie. You got that right, Jake. You're only helping the other team when you miss the net like that. It sends it all the way down into your own end of the ice. And look out. And here's Postman with a shot and scores. Another shorthanded goal. You can just feel it coming as that shot ricocheted down into the Islander zone, and then they get hemmed in and give up the shorthanded goal for the second time of the game. Like throughout the season, many things not going right. Crossman, you'll remember he had a pretty good shot earlier. He got it up high. This one, he fed it down low, right on the lower right-hand corner. There's the pass to Crossman, and with time and Dennis Potvan in front of Billy Smith. Smith did not see it. Potvan clearly in front of him, and a perfect shot by Crossman into the lower right-hand corner, just kicking the goalpost, makes it four to one. You have to go back and think of the John Tonelli shot. He missed it by a good two feet. It went all the way around down into the Islanders' end of the ice. It ends up being a shorthanded goal, their second of the game for Philadelphia. 
And now Prop's penalty expires. Teams at six aside, and the Islanders are down by three goals again. Four to one, Philadelphia, here at the Spectrum on St. Patrick's Day afternoon. Dale Henry checked in the center ice area as he tried to come down left wing. The puck was dumped in. Going after it is Stefan Persson. Persson across to the left side. This is Kortko. Roger is over the line, holding on to the puck. Got it away from Howe, but right to Tuckett. Rick Tuckett goes to the left side. Myers overskated in the center. That was Hackboard who couldn't handle it. Now Nystrom gets a break. Trying to come in on the right side. He was dragged down. Play allowed to continue. Tuckett left the puck, and Longevin shoots it wide of the flyer goal. Mark Howe failed in his first effort to clear it out. Succeeds on the second, and this is Rick Tuckett. Fires one for the point. Pad saved by Smith, and the rebound is shot wide by Hackborn. And Hackborn back to the point for Erickson. That's the shot go. Smith makes the save, and there's Kortko clearing it. It hits Hackborn. Still in the Islanders zone. The Flyers move it along the boards. Erickson at the blue line into Carson. Carson shot off the skates of Deneen, who picks it up and starts out. For Deneen to Bob Nystrom. Nystrom shoots one from the blue line that missed, and that was a bullet. Comes off the glass to Tuckett. Plays it off Carson skates at the flyer line. Lindsey Carson back to Erickson. Into the center ice zone off Longevin and it's offside called as Flatley gets a stick on it in the flyer zone. There's a break in the action. The score, Philadelphia four. The Islanders one. Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. The technology behind it gives this driver engine protection he can depend on. And this driver. And this driver. And this driver. Mobile Synthetic Oil Technology. There's no finer engine protection on Earth or anywhere else. 11-11, at what time is left here in the second period. Philadelphia, another shorthanded goal, have regained a three-goal lead. It's 4-1. to Boudelier out of defense, fed the puck neatly to LaFontaine, who steps into the flyer zone. Pulls it around to check. Gave it to Keller, who shot it wide. Marsh checked by LaFontaine. They go back of the net together. LaFontaine stripped of the puck. Bergen trying to move it out. With help from Craven, it's shot down into the Islanders' zone. And to touch up is Boudelier. That's icing against Philadelphia. Well, one of the great trivia questions to come down the pike in future years, if you're a Flyer fan, will be who scored their 5,000th goal in Philadelphia's Flyer history. That came last night in their victory at Toronto. And it was Burry Craven at the second goal of the game. First expansion team in the National Hockey League to reach the 5,000 mark. There's some young ladies with their Irish bouquet or boudinier whatever uh, the day for the wearing of the green yes 5,000 goals Philadelphia they've scored over that now but they reached that plateau last night I think the Islanders in comparison have something like 3,880 well a little more than that 3,900 3,286 possibly around that 3,888 as of this afternoon remember every one of them Eddie <laughs> close to it I guess yeah. huh? oh yes Here's Crossman coming in. Centered one in front that went wide of the net. LaFontaine works it ahead to Flatley. The only reason I mentioned remembering everyone, you got the first and a bunch more. Well, yeah. I got the first. I don't know a <laughs> lot after that. Well, a bunch sounds good. It covers yeah. a lot of areas. It does. Here are the Flyers moving in. Sinisalo on right wing, making the shot on target. Smith the save. It dropped into the top of his goal pads, and we'll get a face-off deep in the Islanders' zone. Islanders with a lot of work ahead of them. About half of the game is finished now. 10.06 remaining here in the second period. Past performance shows that the Islanders can come back. The team has been known to get things rolling again, but it's going to take a lot of effort from all of the players. Back-to-back -back games. There's the recipient of Jiggs McDonald's <laughs> tickets. <laughs> they do not look like leprechauns, or at least what I've been led to believe a leprechaun looks like. That's the black Irish, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Brutalier clearing it around behind his own goal. Bossy in the far corner. Back to Paul Brutalier. Brutalier to Tonelli. The Pearson at center ice went to the right side. Bossy breaks into the flyer zone. The pass to Trotche was tipped out into center ice. 
Canelli recovered it, then was checked, and Poulin comes over the line on right wing. Dave Poulin drops it, a drive turned aside as Rich Sutter got it away quickly. Now another shot from the point is blocked. Poulin on the backhand into the catching glove of Smith, who was going wide, and he elects to hold on. There's a break in the action. This game coming to you from the Spectrum in Philadelphia with the Flyers leading 4-1. Let Toyota's lowest-priced car, the Toyota Tercel, take you over the rainbow. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. There's a new movement sweeping the country. The 1985 Toyota van. So innovative, it'll change the way you think about vans. It seats seven and gives you the best gas mileage of any van you can buy. The Toyota van. Face off in the Islander end of the ice. Trache out with Tonelli and Bossy for the Islanders. The puck went to Trache, got it to the line. The Crimmon held it right at the point, centered one in front, and the shot from Hackborn was blocked at the defense. Lane and Tockett in the battle for it. Overcomes Potvin. Around to the left side for John Tonelli. Now to Trache at center ice. Trache shooting it in. Lindbergh made the save, cleared it to the corner. Bossy trying to get it to the point. Potvin had to recover outside the line, got it to Gord Lane. Lane dumps it off the right wing board. That's Howe chasing it back of the net. Mark Howe put it right on Dwayne Sutter's stick then. Lindbergh able to make the save. There's a drive, then they score, but it's waved off. Oh, ball, a hand pass indicated right there by referee Bob Myers. Fine also by the Islanders, Jake, but it's a hand pass. Clearly, everybody could see it. Kortko getting his hand up. Here's Dwayne Sutter. What a beautiful job of anticipating. Takes the puck. He could have kept going. Here's the save by Lindbergh. Watch the hand. Tonelli knocks it down. Kortko drills it into the top of the net. Well, it wasn't drilled. It was shot hard, but it went flipping and bobbling. There's the puck in the air. John Tonelli jumps for the ball, for the jump ball. There's the shot over Lindbergh into the net, but it's disallowed on the hand pass. Now, Gordy Deneen moving in from the faceoff, shot it over the glass, up into the seats. So the Islanders denied with a hand pass. We still have eight minutes and 45 seconds remaining here in the second period. Souvenir. Doesn't look like it hurt the catch. It's the third time in the club history that the Islanders have been involved in the game with three shorthanded goals. That's three by both teams. The other is the Rangers in 77. One by the Rangers, two by the Islanders. The other was Washington in 1983. All three by the Islanders. Now the Islanders with Roger Kurtko centering for Dwayne Sutter and Thomas Johnson. Dwayne Sutter just leaned into prop in the flyer zone and upset with that. Sutter chasing it again from the Islander side of things. Dumped it in deeper and set a saddle back to give it to Crossman. He is tied up in the corner. Janssen puts it in front. Wayne Sutter shoots and scores! Wayne Sutter from Thomas Janssen, and it's 4-2. to two. Wayne on a hot streak. Celebrated his 25th birthday yesterday. That's three goals in the last three games. The Islanders know they're desperate. They needed a goal. They've got to get things rolling for them. Beautiful pass. Fine hustle by the Islanders. Wayne Sutter finishes the scoring play. Ramming it in here, the Philadelphia Flyers making one of their few mistakes. The Islanders out hustle them. Thomas Johnson to Dwayne Sutter, and his shot, his 14th goal of the season, brings the Islanders back within two. John D'Amico having some words with Al Arbor about something that's gone on in the hockey game at the Islander bench. This is the fourth consecutive game that John D'Amico has worked involving the New York Islanders. There's been something going on between D'Amico and Bossy, and I think John D'Amico was asking Al Arbor to relay to Bossy that if he keeps it up, there could be further penalties. I'm only sort of the feel I get is that there's something going on, some dialogue between Bossy and D'Amico that is upsetting the veteran linesman. But Dwayne Sutter from Johnson to get back to the goal scoring, and it's 4-2. to two. The Islanders start out of their own zone. Pearson to LaFontaine, who steps over the line, dropped it to Flatley, who shoots. Lindbergh the save. He lost it momentarily, and then covered up and gets this face off. The Islanders pick things up. The goal by Sutter. Kind of a thing that sparks the team. Get a goal. 
on the road. You're down by three. And against the Philadelphia Flyers, who are a stingy hockey team, particularly at home, not easy to come up with goals. But Dwayne Sutters, a moment ago, is 14th of the season, making it 4-2. to two. Right back comes Pat LaFontaine. LaFontaine has figured more in the play, Jigs, offensively. He won a face-off the last time in the same position he's in now when the Islanders were on a power play. Pretty good endorsement for him, too, being out on the power play. Got it back to Stefan Pearson, who was standing in the same position, and he tipped it off the goal post to the right of Pelly Lindbergh. He'll face off here against Lam Hackborn of the Flyers. Four to two, Philadelphia leading. LaFontaine got it turned around, and Caller to Boudelier. Up to just wide, there's Caller back of the net. Tried to get Lindbergh moving, comes out in front of the backhander, off. The goaltender who was down, and now Bob Myers is calling a penalty. Hooking penalty to the Philadelphia Flyers. A break in the action with the Flyers four, the Islanders two. We'll be back in a moment. Buds for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. This buds for you, for all you do. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This buds for you. Youthful face of Lindsey Carson, outstanding player for Philadelphia. He draws a hooking penalty, and the Islanders, who trail by two, get an opportunity on the power play. But wait a minute. Uh -huh. Philadelphia have two shorthanded goals. Maybe the Islanders ought to decline the penalty. Raven moving up, couldn't get it away from Janssen at center ice. Janssen on the right point, Puff out on the left. Up front, it's Tonelli with Bossy and Trutche. And the puck dumped into the flyer zone. Howe moves it around the boards. There's Bossy to the point for Potman. Off and let's a goal. Lindbergh the save and the rebound is slapped down into the Islander end. Shots are even at 19 aside. Flyers up four to two and the Islanders with a man advantage. Johnson the pop end. Right back it goes. Pop end starts out. Center ice got it to Bossy. Over the line on a neat move on McCrimmon. Gave it to Tonelli. He shoots that hit. McCrimmon and goes up into the seat. Good passing play. Dennis Potvin and Thomas Johnson starting the play. They get it to Bossy. Bossy drops it. Right here, Bossy across the blue line. He got partly around McCrimmon and then he dropped it to John Tonelli. McCrimmon makes an excellent defensive move. Look at the timing. Al, Al Arbor years ago. McCrimmon going down. Blocking the shot by John Tonelli, breaking up an Islander play. The puck went up into the seat. One more game in the regular season between these two teams. It's here at the Spectrum on the 4th of April. We have only one more regular season telecast for you on Channel 9, and that'll be from Quebec City on Thursday, March 28th. Play underway, and then the puck skips off a skate and out of play. The last nine games for the New York Islanders now as they play game 71 here this afternoon. Philadelphia with 10 games remaining. They have three with the Rangers in the last 10 games of the regular season. Two games with New Jersey. One more with the Islanders, as I mentioned, and one more with Pittsburgh. That's all, of course, in the Patrick Division. Outside the division, games with Montreal, Chicago, and Detroit to finish out the Philadelphia regular season. The Islanders with a game remaining with each one of the Patrick Division teams. Two left with Quebec, one with Los Angeles, and one with Edmonton. That Edmonton game is at the Nassau Coliseum. Motvan up the middle to Trache. Off his stick to Pearson, who carries it into center ice. They couldn't control it. Now he got it right back as Howe's clearing attempt hit him. Ends up in the crowd to the right of the fire net. 51 seconds remaining in Carson's hooking penalty. Speaking of two shorthanded goals, the Flyers have scored in this hockey game. They're second to Edmonton. They have 17 now, the Philadelphia Flyers. Edmonton leads the National Hockey League with 24 shorthanded goals. Boy. What should you do? Just to climb power plays when you <laughs> You'd almost orders? think so. I said that just jokingly, but goodness, when they get into that kind of a rut. Look out again. Yeah, here are the Flyers coming out two on one. Pulling across the line. Moves in. Shoots the pistonet. John Tonelli over on the right side. Takes a look. Works it across to Poffin. Up to Bossy. Awaits at center ice. Rink wide to John Tonelli. 
Dinelli cutting to the left, lifted through for Denny Potvin. Shot it around the boards. It'll go to Bossy, who comes in on the right side. Into Trache. In front to Tonelli, who couldn't steer it in. Potvin chases it now. It's knocked away from him and comes out into center ice, recovered by Pearson. Stefan Pearson to Trache to Potvin, back to Pearson. Stefan gives it to the Islander captain. Up the right wing it goes to Bossy. A. Trache and Tonelli get across the Philadelphia line. It's fed across to Longevin, who's just come out. Longevin shot. Lindbergh out to make the save. There's Trache dumping it back in the net, but Tonelli is going to go off for interference. The penalty to Carson had just expired. Tonelli knocked Lindbergh down, and the Islanders are going to be shorthanded. Philadelphia coming off a big kill against the Islanders. They came close to getting a goal again. Poulin shot. Billy Smith while the puck was a little wider than that. Smith got a chunk of it, but it was a two-on-one break for Philadelphia, one of the best scoring opportunities. Dave Longevin winds up. Tonelli is cruising in front of the net at this point. There's the shot. There's Tonelli as he runs into the goaltender. Pelly Lindbergh takes a shove, but he gets into the penalty box, a two-minute interference penalty. Dave Longevin just came out of the off the Islanders' bench. There's the shot. Lindbergh down. McCrimmon gives Tonelli a bit of a push. Killing it off for the Islanders, Flatley, Kortko, Longevin, and Dedeen. As the puck is dumped into the Islanders' zone, Dedeen around the boards. Zezel, rather, came out of the corner, and Smith steers that out into the center ice zone. Fourth power play of the game for the Philadelphia Flyers. They've managed but one shot on goal, Jigs, in three-plus power plays so far. The Islanders doing a fine job killing off their penalty. One of the reasons right there, you saw Kortko reach up and knock the pass out of the air, dragged the puck at center, then gave it to Flatley. Patrick Flatley to Roger Kortko. Kortko twisting and turning neatly to get away from Zezel, comes over the line, holds on to it here, and then drops it back to Longevin. A fine job by number 11, Roger. Making, making it look easy, Jigs, but it's not. That's a lot of hard work that Roger Kortko and Patrick Flatley are going through, but what a job they're doing. Flatley now getting it back to Deneen, to Longevin, and the Flyers can't get anything going. Now they get control of the puck with 50 seconds left in Tonelli's penalty. Pass up the middle, over the line. Loose in the Islander zone, and then as Bergen moved in, they're called for an offside, and 46 seconds is all that's left in Tonelli's penalty. Nice to watch. Roger Kortko, Patrick Flatley, keeping the puck away from the Philadelphia Flyers as they're on a power play. They're fourth in the hockey game. Good stick handling, good skating, good positional work by the Islander penalty killers. They get a lot of help from the defense in that particular situation. They go as far as they can go, then they'll turn quickly and move it back to the defenseman. Now McCrimmon in on the right wing boards, parks at the top of the circle, fed it in a little deeper, comes back to McCrimmon, to the corner. Bergen got it to Ron Sutter to the left point. That's how with a shot, kicked out by Bill Smith. McCrimmon and Caller went to the boards, and it's Caller clearing the puck into the center ice zone, but Howe got back sparkly. Mark Howe overled Bergen here on right wing, and Puffan has dumped it down the boards. Lindbergh couldn't hold on to it. Here's Johnson in quickly. Thomas Johnson fires when Lindbergh just got a piece of it. Bergen circles the flyer net, plays it up the left wing. Ron Sutter tips it to Howe. He comes over center into the Islander zone, offside. Over on the left side, headed for the net in full steam was Murray Craven and well ahead of the puck carrier. Two seconds is all that remains in the penalty to John Tonelli. Another good kill for the Islanders, a face-off in the center ice area. So they'll have killed off another penalty. Another power play by the Philadelphia Flyers. 21 shots apiece in this hockey game for the team. Philadelphia leading the Islanders 4-2. Crossman scored in the second period earlier, a shorthanded goal at 7.07, then Dwayne Sutter at 11.38 for the Islanders' second goal. Philadelphia dumping it in, that long shot by Brad Marsh is regarded as a shot on goal, and here's Bossy. Games at six aside as Bossy gave the puck to Trottier. Ryan Trottier at center ice, knocked down, and the check by Rich Sutter. Bonjamin dumped it in. Crossman reached and just did get it away from Bossy. Trache sets up Bossy back of the net. Mike Bossy centered one in front that was tipped and comes out into the center ice zone. Benin hustles back. He turned and didn't see Pullen in time. And here's a break for the Flyers, but they couldn't capitalize on it as Derek Smith collided with Pullen. Loose puck. Benin sends Tonelli down the left wing. John Tonelli struggling to get into the Flyers zone, and he's taken off the play by Pullen. 
At center ice, Trache drops it back into Deneen. Trache. Three minutes left in the period as Trache comes over the blue line. Marsh takes him into the corner boards. They grapple there. Rossi trying to pull the puck loose, can't do it, and there's no further play. There is a break in the action at the Spectrum in Philadelphia with the score now, the Flyers 4, the Islanders 2. What does it take to excel? It takes speed. The game has not lessened from the drop of the first puck in the first period. Right from the draw, Pearson rippled the mesh on the outside of the net, however, and the Flyers clear it to center ice. Pearson, after getting that shot, Fontaine had won the draw, getting it to Stefan, and now to Boudelier. Boudelier clears it, right to Carson, who broke in on the right side. Fires one that missed the net. Bounces to Howe at the left point. Shoots it in around the boards. Here's Tockett. Rick Tockett works it in deeper. Carson checked on the boards by Pearson, and the Fontaine goes to right wing to Flatley. It bounced away from him. The Flyers get a... Shot and score. It's tipped off the stick to the right of Bill Smith. And a goal by the Flyers that makes it 5-2. to two. And again, they regain that three-goal lead. Taking advantage of a mistake, Lindsey Carson right here. Watch this. It's a half a pass, half a shot. Coming in from the side, Carson gets it in behind Billy Smith. It was kind of a broken play right from the beginning. Philadelphia gained possession. Here's a half a shot. It was deflected, and then Carson coming out to the right of Smith with the puck. The timing was perfect for it on the broken play. He tipped it in behind Billy Smith. Five to two now with two minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the second period. Philadelphia get a big break on a broken play, and Carson tips it in. Ball number 19 for Lindsey Carson. The second against the Islanders this season, and the Flyers come over the line again. Ron Sutter had a shot deflected. That ends up in the seats. Tockett and Hackborn get the assists on Carson's goal, making it 5-2 Philadelphia. All the Islanders had gained is now lost with Carson's goal at 17-41. Big difference going uh, out of the second period, which is not over by any means. Coming into the third with a three-goal bout, the Islanders have to work hard, try and get that margin narrowed down to two again. Philadelphia not showing any signs of missing their big goal scorer. Tim Kerr with 51 goals on the season, 38 assists. Out of the lineup with an injury, and he'll be visiting with Ed Westfall on our second intermission this afternoon. He's in the playoffs. And I don't think it's going to make a, a big difference in Philadelphia because there's so many changed faces in our lineup that they went around for all those games. So it's, uh, you know, I, I'm sure the Rangers uh, would feel feel good against playing. As I was listening to uh, the game yesterday, and, and Don Maloney said that uh, they think they, they could play well against us. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Tim Kerr, I have to ask you this question. I haven't had a chance to ask uh, anybody on the Philadelphia Flyers that's been around as long as you have with them. Now Bobby Clark went from being a player and very quickly became the general manager. Does he change much? Well, I'm sure all players change when they leave the game, uh, Eddie, but he's done a, you know, a great job, and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's very uh, helpful to the guys. He comes down, and, uh, you know, if there's something that he can help you with, he'll still point out to you and help you, and Bob's never been a guy to give a lot of criticism and things, and uh, so he's very uh, positive with the players, and uh, he's done a great job, and, he, you know, he's made some good moves already as a GM. Does he uh, does he ever get mad at the team? Does he ever come down and uh, and voice a uh, an opinion that will say is in a negative note? No, he's uh, hasn't done that yet at all. You know, maybe it'll come someday. But uh, matter of fact, he's been uh, like I say, he's been very positive. We, we won eight games in a row, and then we went on the road and lost to uh, Quebec and uh, and New Jersey and another loss somewhere. You know, we were all down, but he came in and, uh, you know, pumped us up and uh, helped us out, and we started winning after that. Tim Kerr, I want to thank you. I know it's not an easy climb. We're very high up in the uh, Philadelphia spectrum. You with a knee injury, maybe it will be better if Bobby doesn't know that you're up here. Appreciate the visit, and good luck to you and your team and the rest of the season in the playoffs. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Tim Kerr, the fine forward of the Philadelphia Flyers. Let's rejoin now Jiggs McDonald. All right, Eddie, Tim Kerr will receive from members only a brand-new jacket. I hope they make them that size. Members only, the brand that's changing the way America looks. Members only is now the first name in fashion for the entire family. Look for it in fine stores everywhere. The Flyers leading the Islanders 5-2 to two, will return for third period action right after this message. 
The irresistible Canon AE-1 program. John, I'm working. Can I have my camera back? Just one more. It's hard to put down, because it's so simple to use. This Canon AE-1 program, super. Just one more. The program mode makes it easy to shoot like a pro. Here, get to work. Canon's AE-1 program. Keep your eye on the ball. And... So advanced, it's simple. Canon, the official camera of the National Hockey League. If you couldn't advertise in the New York Telephone Yellow Pages, how in heaven's name would your business get serious customers? The Yellow Pages makes getting serious customers a lot easier because four out of five people who pick it up are ready to buy. Where would you be without it? The official New York Telephone Yellow Pages. Published by 9X Information Resources. There's a new game in town. It's called putting the fun back into driving. Introducing the Toyota MR2 Sports Car, a mid-engine, 16-valve, fuel-injected Playmate designed for the kind of performance that says, look out, here I come. But you'll drive it just for the fun of it. The Toyota MR2. It's the best game in town. The fun is back. Whether your company has a few employees or thousands, welcome. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. We're eager to meet the needs of growing companies. As part of an $85 billion connection, we're serving some of America's largest companies. And our worldwide resources are available to meet your international needs. So from all of us, welcome. Welcome to National Westminster Bank USA. Jimmy. Name it. Better straighten up. Yeah, we don't want to disappoint your fans. No. Hey, Jimmy, good run. You had him right from the gate. Your best deserves the best. Two Bud Lights. The less filling light beer with a first name and taste. Hey, Jimmy! Right. Bud Light. Back here at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, the Flyers leading the Islanders by a score of 5-2. to two. There's one other game underway in the NHL this afternoon. Buffalo and Winnipeg are tied 1-1. That's a first period score, the game being played at Winnipeg. Tonight, Pittsburgh is at Hartford. The Devils and the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. Chicago is paying a visit at Vancouver. And the Los Angeles Kings hosting the Edmonton Oilers tonight. So if you live in any of those areas where National Hockey League games are being played, we hope you'll get out and see them. The American Hockey League, the Islanders farm team, the Springfield Indians, are playing the Baltimore Skipjacks at Baltimore tonight. Just when you thought it was safe to go to sleep at night, the best of Saturday Night Live returns to Channel 9. Join Chevy Chase, John Belushi, and the not ready for primetime players Monday through Wednesday nights at 12, right here on Channel 9. The Islanders go home for a couple of games this week. They have the Los Angeles Kings visiting on Tuesday night. And the Quebec Nordiques make their only visit to the Nassau Coliseum on Thursday. And then a strange weekend. The Islanders are off on Saturday. Play the Rangers at Madison Square Garden next Sunday night. A strange Saturday night off. Be like human people, won't we? All right. That's the only one, isn't it, all season long? I think there was one earlier in December when they were traveling between Winnipeg and Vancouver, but that's been basically it. You're absolutely correct. December the 1st. The Islanders were in Winnipeg on the 30th of November, off on Saturday the 1st, Sunday the 2nd, and played in Vancouver on the 3rd. The most incredible prizes in TV history are given away each night on the fast-paced and exciting new game show, Sale of the Century, Wednesday nights at 8.30, right here on Channel 9. Sale of the Century. Prizes are some pretty good ones, I understand. Buffalo just got a prize. They're ahead of Winnipeg 2-1 to one after having trailed at the arena in Winnipeg. The Islanders trailing going to the third period, and their record 
in coming from behind this season, not that good. Five times they've come back to win. 19 times they've gone on to lose the game, and only twice have they been able to recover and get a point out of it in a tie. Now, to take a look at a couple of the highlights from the second period, Crossman, there he is, number three, taking the pass from Sinisilo, and Dennis Potvan positioning himself to block the shot. What a perfectly placed shot by Crossman. You could see Billy Smith looking at Potvan. Potvan and he, Smith, did not see it. Sutter got the final, or the second Islander goal from Thomas Johnson. Here's Johnson picking up the puck. There's the pass. Sutter, beautiful shot. Let it go right away, and Pelly Lindbergh sliding across the net was not able to get back to where he shot it from. Sutter got his 14th of the season from Thomas Johnson at 11.38. That made the score four to two, but then Carson, of course, scored after that to make it five to two at 17-41. Well, Trottier starts this third period, centering for John Tonelli and Mike Bossy, and the puck dumped into the flyer zone immediately. Mark Howe went back for it, banks it off the boards, out into center ice, away from Pearson, who gives chase. Icing had been waved off, so Pearson works it behind the net to Boudelier, to Tonelli, who tips it into the center ice zone. That's Brad McCrimmon for the Flyers. Fired it right back in and wide of the net. Boudelier to the right wing for Bossy off the boards. Bossy had to recover, banked it off Poulin and into center ice. McCrimmon goes rink wide to Rich Sutter. He is checked by Boudelier. McCrimmon covering up, dumps it into the Islander zone. Trache back playing the left point now to Pearson. Step from Pearson ahead to Mike Bossy at center ice, shoots it into the flyer zone, and the Islanders go for a player change. McCrimmon starts out for Philadelphia. Pass to Rich Sutter. Over the line with a big slap shot. Smith, the glove save, and he drops it off for Flatley. Patrick Flatley dumps it into the center ice zone. Marsh is back. First minute gone here in the third period. Longevin chasing the puck. Gave it to LaFontaine. That's LaFontaine to Gord Deneen. It went off his right skate. He picks it up at center ice. Comes over the line, working in on Marsh. LaFontaine was there, but Deneen couldn't get the pass to him, and the Flyers going to break. Hackhorn is over the line. Shooting, and that missed the net. Ends up on the far side. Caller tips it to Flatley. He and LaFontaine, two on two. Flatley holding the puck at the flyer line. He shoots it, hit Mark. Flatley gets it again. Goes into the corner, dumps it back in the net for Caller. Looks for somebody in front. Brings it out. It's chased into the corner by Hackborn's check. Anders Caller slips away from Hackborn and shot it wide. Here's Longevin at the left point. Let's one go, and that was deflected wide of the net. Longevin. Moves in as Deneen shot it wide. It comes off the boards. Some shoving going on in front of the net. And now Longevin shoots it wide again. Here's Brad March. He flipped the puck into the center ice zone. It went off Deneen, who picks it up at the blue line. Or Deneen shot it off Erickson, who's out on the flyer defense. Erickson ahead to Sinisano. He picks it up in the Islander end. Cuts in with a shot. Spits the save. And he's got it in the catching glove after making the save on a second shot. Some good pressure by the Islanders. Sinisilo comes racing back with a shot at Billy Smith. Smith makes the save. Sinisilo gets his own rebound. Smith makes another save, this time hanging onto it. He's having a jaw session right now with Myers. No harsh words, just a discussion about something going on in the hockey game. A couple of good opportunities for the Islanders. Philadelphia jigs cover very well in their own end of the ice. Yeah, they do. You are looking at Bill Smith. He has 16 victories on the season. Only three of them have come away from the Nassau Coliseum. His record on the road is three wins, seven losses, and one tie. Philadelphia Jigs have lost but one hockey game that they led after two periods in. November the 29th against the New Jersey Devils. They lost two to one after leading one to nothing at the end of two. They have a three-goal lead over the Islanders with 17 and a half minutes to play here in the third period. Pearson failed to clear the puck out. Craven has dumped it around the boards. Picked up by Bergen, who tried to cut in. Janssen knocked him down. Ron Sutter with the puck. Back of the net. That's Bergen trying to center. Pearson chases him deep to the corner, and the puck went loose for Kortko. Roger Kortko played his junior hockey at Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, with a pass to Dwayne Sutter now to Janssen off his stick at the flyer line, and it's cleared up for Murray Craven. Craven into the Islander zone. Marks on the right wing boards. Centered one in front. Pearson cut it off. 
Ron Sutter and back into Bill Smith. And here's Blaine Sutter into the flyer zone. Played it in around Dvorak. Puts it out in front, but out of the reach of Johnson. Pot fan from the blue line. Shot one high and out of play. A break in the action. 16-48 remaining. The score, Flyers 5, Islanders 2. Every year, there comes a moment when that little voice inside you says, Stanley, oh Stanley, it's time. And when it's time to get away, Eastern Airlines can take you far away for far less than you might imagine to warm and sunny Florida, the Bahamas, and the Caribbean. So the next time your little voice tells you it's time, it's time to call Eastern. Is it a time you listen to your little voice? San Juan, 334 to 494, including airfare and hotel. It's time. Well, now, would you believe that looks a little more like a leprechaun than I've seen <laughs> all day? <laughs> and he's scotch. <laughs> Is he really? Yes. You're not serious. I'm very serious. Well, I'll be doggone. Man has worked a home team bench here at the Spectrum for many, many years. Myers up 5-2. to two. They've dumped the puck down the boards into the Islanders' zone. Icing has waved off. And Potvan went back. Gave it to Dale Henry. Now to Pat LaFontaine. Off the boards to Bob Nystrom. Nystrom over center ice. Across the Philadelphia line. Plays it across the lane here on the right side. That goes back of the net for Dale Henry. Slipped away from the check of Marsh. He couldn't get around Zezel. And Marsh clears the puck. It went off lane stick. Henry picked it up and outside the blue line. Now back to Potvin. Benny Potvin. Long pass off Marsh. At center ice. It's taken by Poulin. Steps into the Islander zone. Dave Pullen goes to the backhand and is checked by Potvin. Pullen with it again. Into the corner to prop and overcomes Dale Henry. Henry lost it to Pullen. Can't cut in. It's loose. Cleared by Smith to Nystrom. Bobby Nystrom's pass. Off the stick. Ends up on the stick of Henry. Now back to Potvin. Out to Nystrom. To Dale Henry. Overskated it. Breaking in over the line is Derek Smith. Let's a shot go. Smith the glove save and he holds on to it. Playing the angle perfectly, Billy Smith standing out at the top of the crease, picking off another shot by the Philadelphia Flyers. Derek Smith, what a game he had for Philadelphia against the Washington Capitals. He was clearly the best player on the ice. Look at Bill Toy with him. Puck shot right into the mitt. Billy having the mitt down nice and low. Much like, I guess, an infielder in baseball. They're always told, isn't it, that they're supposed to keep the mitt down low and then come up to get the ball and then... Being a goaltender, I would assume, watching good goaltenders, which Billy Smith, of course, is one, they carry the glove very low, much easier to come up and get something than trying to go down exactly. and get it. Exactly, and the baseball theory, a good one. Launch of it around the point, or the boards, I should say, to Bossy, comes out on this right side. Mike Bossy over the Philadelphia line, shoots it in around the boards. Goes to Derek Smith, Trotje backed into him, but how with it now? Over to McCrimmon. Off his stick to Bossy to Tonelli. He couldn't trap it back in the net. Trache goes in after it. Draws a crowd, and the Flyers come up with the puck. Mark Howe clearing it into center ice. Rich Sutter fed it to McCrimmon, who's over the line on right wing. Brad McCrimmon a drive. Hit the goal post. Heads up with the stick of Bossy, and then across to Trache at center ice. Couldn't control it, and the Flyers just clear it. Or Deneen, who's lost a glove, can't get a stick on the puck. Rich Sutter slipped in around Longevin and goes after it in the corner. Rich Sutter checked by Mike Bossy. Bossy comes back for the puck. Goes to the left side for Tonelli. Now to Longevin. Longevin shooting it into the flyer zone as the Islanders are in the middle of player changes. Flatley went in after it. Couldn't get to it. Carson plays it across to Erickson. Dumped it in out of the reach of Hackborn. And that's going to be called back for icing. Hey, think back. Well, that's not. We'll take a break instead. 14 minutes, 21 seconds left in the third period. The score, Flyers 5, Islanders 2. There's the time left, 14-21. The Flyers lead the Islanders 5-2 to two in the only other out-of-town game. 2-1, to one, as you mentioned, uh, Buffalo over Winnipeg. Rough and ceiling for Buffalo. Arneal for the Winnipeg Jets. Philadelphia getting the draw here from LaFontaine, who's out between Flatley and Caller. And they've cleared the puck. Shove back in. Jumped into the center ice zone, and now LaFontaine steps over the line. Left it for Flatley, and his shot just missed. Flatley, after the rebound, it bounced away from him. There's Keller centering. It hits LaFontaine. Flatley picks it up. No, he didn't. Reached for it. Shoved it underneath the flyer player, Erickson. 
No call, and Philadelphia is struggling into center ice. The Islanders struggle to control it, and Flatley's pass went behind LaFontaine, now to Hackborn. Into the Islanders' zone on right wing. Hackborn is checked by Caller, and Boudelier dumps it down into the Philadelphia end. Mark Howe catches the Islanders, and a player change comes over the line with a shot that hit Lane. Dribbles through to Potvin, who clears it, but not out. There's a drive, steered aside by Smith, comes back to Howe, and his shot blocked by Potvin. Out to Dwayne Sutter. Sutter is over the fire line, but is carried in offside. It's going to think back to the season of 79-80 when the Philadelphia Flyers went 35 games without a loss. Then were defeated in the Stanley Cup Finals by the New York Islanders. There are only five players from that 79-80 team that are still active in the National Hockey League. A couple are injured. Bill Barber, of course, has been out for the season, and Paul Holmgren. But the others from that 79-80 team that are still playing, Brian Propp is the only guy with the Flyers. We've got Mel Bridgman at New Jersey, Kenny Linsman and Pete Peters at Boston, and Ben Wilson in Chicago. Everybody else out of the game. How time flies five seasons ago. That's not that long ago, Jegs, and to have only those few players, all good players, too, still playing in the National Hockey League. Five years ago, what a changeover. Of course, the management here at, with the Philadelphia Flyers has changed as rapidly as some of the players. <laughs> yes, Pat Quinn was coach of that team. The following year, was relieved of his duties. Went to law school, had some time remaining on his Philadelphia contract. Availed himself of higher education and now has taken that to Los Angeles and has the Kings turned around and into a playoff position. The way it stands right now, they'll face the Edmonton Oilers in the opening round. If you look at Brad Marsh, former first-round draft choice of the Atlanta Flames, dealt over here for Mel Bridgman. Bridgman ends up in New Jersey as the captain there. Portco between Dwayne Sutter and Thomas Johnson as Al Arbor changes up the troops. He has Deneen and Langevin on defense. Cecil between Prop and Sinisalo, the Philadelphia forwards. And Cecil dumping the puck off Johnson's stick, going back for it is Deneen. Deneen's pass intercepted, and he got it right back on a gift from Sinisalo. Dwayne Sutter sends Johnson over the flyer line. Thomas Johnson's backhander, Lindbergh to save, and he holds on to it. Dwayne Sutter and Marsh go at it back to the net. Earlier this game, it was Marsh and Flatley, now Dwayne Sutter, wearing off with Brad Marsh. Dwayne Sutter leads the Islanders in penalty minutes on the season. Philadelphia's penalty minute leader is Rick Tockett. Now the linesmen, D'Amico and Hodges, in between them, it's more a verbal debate than anything else right now. So some penalties coming up. And with a break in the action here at the Spectrum, your score is the Philadelphia Flyers 5, the New York Islanders 2. Loss in the Ontario Junior League this year, a league record. The writer, uh, the was alluding to the fact that there's going to be a lot of coaches changes like there's already been here this year in the National Hockey League more to come. He thinks that Terry Crisp maybe looked upon favorably for one of the new jobs. Might well be. Bill Smith made a save down in the Islander zone as you saw. Now Bossy has dumped the puck in. It goes off the stick and up into the seats to the right of Pelly Lindbergh. Speaking of potential coaches in the National Hockey League I would have to think that Lauren Henning would sit high on the list of potential NHL coaches for somewhere next year with the job he's done with the Springfield Indians. When you think of Minnesota North Stars and the New York Islanders and the number of injuries that they've had all season long, both teams, and both teams supply Lauren Henning and the Springfield Indians with the players. He's done an outstanding job. Yes, I would think he would receive a lot of consideration for jobs that would be open, as you say. Here's Trache trying to come out of the corner. Buck knocked away from him. Bossy got a stick on it. It's in Trache skates. Never did recontrol it. And Pearson takes over at center ice. Stefan Pearson and Paul Boudelier on defense. Trache picking up the puck and backhanding it in. Chasing it is Mark Howe. Just over 11 minutes to play in the third period. 
The Islanders have been stymied in this period and the game by Philadelphia. Airside to Boudelier. Center ice, long pass to LaFontaine, to Bossy, lets it go, and that sails up into the seats. Tipped by Howe, got a stick in front of it. Looked like one of those Hawk missiles that just let go. Bossy shot, deflected, and rising quickly, way up into the seats here in the Philadelphia Spectrum. 600 games, 470 goals. Mike Bossy has scored in his career. Scoring machine, the living legend, call him what you like. He knows where the net is and how to put the puck into it. The Fontaine out at center ice with Caller on the left, Flatley on the right. The Islanders got the draw. Caller into Patrick Flatley. Flatley to Caller, banks it off the boards. That's cleared by Dvorak. And up the left side comes Murray Craven. Craven's pass off Ron Sutter's stick. The puck loose in the Islanders zone. Potvin turned away from Sutter, but... Trailing the play was Bergen, and he stumped it around the boards. Flatley handed it to Dvorak, who couldn't hold on to it. Wheeled in front of the Islander goal again, picked up by Gord Lane. Lane to LaFontaine. He is taken down at center ice. Flatley brings the puck over the line, gives it to LaFontaine. He shoots, and that's what off Dvorak. LaFontaine puts it out in front. There's Flatley with a shot, and Lindbergh comes out to meet it and makes the save. Couldn't control the pass. Pat LaFontaine makes a couple of good plays, getting the puck to Flatley, but when he went to fire it, the puck was rolling. It was bouncing on him. Here's the pass, LaFontaine. Across to Patrick Flatley, and there's his shot. Misfired, fizzled, a dud. Puck stopped, and as he went to shoot it, it took a little hop on him, so he couldn't get anything on it. 10-19 remaining here in the third period. 5-2, Philadelphia Flyers lead the Islanders. Ellie Lindbergh playing in his 57th game of the season. That is a lot of work. You consider back when it was a 60-game season, and even 70, some goaltenders played every game. Not in recent years, and here's a break for Sinisalo on right wing. Comes in with a backhander. Smith the save. The rebound was cleared by Langevin. To Janssen, couldn't get it up to Kortko in the first effort. It's loose again. Roger Kortko kicks it out to Deneen. Or Deneen banks it off the boards. Lindbergh. Blocks that for Mark Howe. Howe takes a look. Fired it out to center ice where Prop got a stick on it. Going back is Deneen. For Deneen to Roger Kortko. The pass to Janssen is intercepted. Prop spins loose from a check. Flips it into the Islander zone. That's Deneen backing in. Out of Nystrom. Couldn't get control of it. The Flyers play it back in offside. There's a break in the action with nine and a half minutes remaining in the third period of Philadelphia with the Flyers leading the Islanders five to two. George, you've got MCI long distance. Think it's right for my business. MCI? Wall Street's top banks and brokers use it. Five of the big six automakers, nine of the top ten oil companies, plus hundreds of thousands of other businesses save hundreds of millions of dollars with MCI. But I'm a small plane. Planes? Six top airlines use MCI for interstate calls anytime, coast to coast. Call MCI. We sound better to business. You were talking about goaltenders playing a lot of games, Jiggs, alluding to the 70-game schedule prior to expansion. The last goaltender to play the whole schedule was the general manager of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Eddie Johnson. Played all 70 games for the Boston Bruins. Now Trache breaks in, got it to Bossy, back to the point, put a leer shot, right on. Lindbergh juggled it, held on, and they'll get another face off at the flyer end. Islanders trying to generate some offense. Boudelier getting the shot away. Got it up high. Lindbergh caught it and hung on. Forced to shoot it quickly. Got it up. The ideal shot, of course, is to keep that either right on the ice or just a little above the stick, about three inches off the ice, so that he can't use the stick on it. He's got to stop it with his pads. That's where the rebounds come from. An interesting note a moment ago with Pelly Lindbergh only having defeated the Islanders once in his career as a Philadelphia Flyer goaltender. Little ear shot in and out. I thought so. Well, there's no question about that one. Bossy makes sure of it, and it's five to three. That's the kind of a shot that he wanted to let go the first time. He gets a second chance at it. He made it good. I, that puck hit in the middle of the net, Jiggs. It was in the first time from the faceoff to Nelly. Trache won it. Here's the shot. Watch carefully. There comes the puck into the middle of the net. It hit the metal part in the middle of the net, come bounding out, but Bossy, just to make sure that there was no 
discussion about it. He slammed it in. Oh, that hit both goalposts. It was not in the first time. What? Thank you for the replay. Get it back, guys, if you can. It went off the goalpost on the left side as Boudelier faced the net. Went across, hit the other goalpost, and bounced out. Mike Fossey put it in. Eddie Vettin is 5-3 to three now, and the Islanders trying to come back here at Philadelphia. LaFontaine got it ahead on the right wing boards, out of the reach of Flatley, and back goes Crossman. Wheeled it out into the center ice zone. Gord Lane reaching over to try and knock it away from Prop. It's Bossy from Boudelier and Trache on the Islander goal. Earlier, Cortko got an assist on Dwayne Sutter's goal. That was the second goal for the Islanders today. Dwayne Sutter from Janssen and Cortko, and now Bossy has made it 5-3. to three. The Islanders will start from deep in their own zone. Still 8 minutes and 25 seconds left in the third period. LaFontaine to Caller. Back to LaFontaine. The pass went behind him and is brought up the ice by Howe. Howe shoots from the point, deflected off the stick and way up into the seats. The uh, official scoring jigs again was bossy from Paul Boudelier and Brian Troche. I think they'll probably change that to Boudelier and John Tonelli. Troche won the draw, went over to John Tonelli on the left side. He passed it back to Paul Boudelier. I thought the puck went in and hit the net inside and bounced out quickly, but it on the second replay, you could see it go off the goalpost to the right of the goaltender, Pelly Lindbergh, went directly across, hit the other goalpost, came out, Bossy slammed it in. Goal number 55 for Bossy. He watches Deneen and Langevin are teamed up on defense. Janssen is up on the left side with Kortko and Nystrom. The Flyers putting on some pressure here, but the pass got through for Nystrom. Out to Janssen at center. Couldn't get around McCrimmon. That's Mark Howe handling it. Over to Tockett. Sent Hackhorn in on the right wing board, but Kortko picks it up now. Gave it to Deneen. Or Deneen at center. Stick handles his way to the Flyer line. Got over the line. Dumped it to the corner. Goes in after it. Or Deneen left it, then gets taken down by Howe. Hortos battles for the puck, ends up in the corner. Ackhorn to the blue line. Longevin brought it outside the line. He thought he had it right on the blue line. John D'Amico standing there. The linesman says, uh-uh. Now Dwayne Sutter and Brad Marsh get out of the penalty boxes after those major calls. We look at Dave Longevin back in the lineup today. He has been in and out, for the most part, out in recent games. Not easy for a player who has played so much for the Islanders to be not included in the lineup. Islanders trying to find the successful combinations as they get ready for the playoffs. Dave run into some problems in his own end of the ice, giving the puck away. I suppose that really has to be the reason that they decided not to use him after a while. Now the puck cleared to center. Pearson back on the Islander defense. The left side for Tonelli. Across to Mike Bossy on right wing. Fired. Lindbergh got the stick in front of that. A good kick save. And Brad Marsh moves it into the center right zone. It goes across to Derek Smith. Boudelier chases him. Smith pulls the puck back. Centered one in front. Pearson clears that to Boudelier. Boudelier from back of the net. Trying to get away from the forechecking of Poulin. They both go to the deck. Puck ends up with the stick of Bossy. Mike Bossy to Brian Trotje over the line on right wing. Tonelli goes to the net. There's Bossy with a shot. That goes up into the seats. Duck. Look out. A break in the action with a little less than seven minutes to play in the third period. And your score, Flyers five, Islanders three. Give me a light. Bud Light? If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light Bud Light. So if you want the less filling light beer Got you. with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. We're being told now, Jiggs, that Boudelier is going to be credited with the goal. So somewhere between now and the end of the hockey game, maybe we'll get the thing straightened out to whatever it is. It's either Boudelier's 12th or Bossy's 55th. Take your choice. The score is 5-3. to three. 
That was the Islander goal coming at 10.50 that we're referring to. Rothan led the puck to Caller over on the left wing boards into the center ice area and dumped it in. Lindbergh out of the net, played it away from Dvorak, who fell. There's LaFontaine, he can't get around a check. Flatley takes another man down, the fans are really upset. Myers have the puck, Brian Prop into the Islander zone, holding on to it, dumps it into the corner. Rothan is there. Rothan trying to move it up the boards, got checked by Zezel. Now the loose puck ends up in the stick of Prop. Ryan Prop and Prop and tumble to the ice. Zezel and LaFontaine battle for control of it. Peter Zezel right up on the boards. Flatley is there now. The puck comes loose. Over goes Lane around to Prop and. There's little battles that can be the difference in a hockey game. Prop and's clearing attempt ends up in the flyer zone, and the Islanders in the middle of the player change. Flyers come up the right wing quickly. Shooting it around the boards in the Islander zone, then they go for a player change. This is Gord Denis. Diddick dressed for the game, played in the first period, but he has been anchored to the bench since that point. The Islanders for checking in the flyer zone. That was Corto. He got a piece of his man and took him down. Local courts getting a lot of exercise at the spectrum from this crowd, this capacity crowd of 17,191. Most of them flyer fans. McCrimmon dumping the puck into center ice. We have five minutes left in the third period. An offside pass as Deneen worked it out to Dwayne Sutter and center ice. Now listen to the chorus. Those are not Irish ditties. <laughs> this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the New York Islanders and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Islanders is prohibited. Of course, what they're yelling about is they think that the Islanders, let's take another look at the goal. Here's the shot as it comes from the point. Watch the goal post. There's the one goal post. Now keep the thing rolling. As the puck comes across the goal line, it goes off the other goal, goal post comes out and Bossy puts it in. Wonder why they'd stop it there. They had a great shot of that puck. First time I saw that, I thought Boudelier had the goal. The second time, you could clearly see the puck ring off both goal posts. Yeah, I thought Boudelier had put it into the middle of the net on that first shot. That's why I said in and out. But I wonder why they don't want Bossy to have the goal. <laughs> That's negative thinking, Ed, but you'll remember they clashed with Brad Marsh and Patrick Flatley. We didn't see the second version. Well, we're sharing our telecast with a local feed, as it's called. And some things go undetected or detected and then drop. Gremlins, well, whatever. Face off to the left of the Islander goal coming up as you look at Mark Howe. And a couple of flyer pucks. Well, there's two of the five that went in the net. <laughs> a couple of happy young fellas here at the hockey game. Flyers leading 5-3. to three. They're out shooting the Islanders 32-27 to 27 at this point in the game. Now on the draw, the Flyers keep it in at the blue line. Crossman played it to the right wing and it shot around to Marsh. Flyers won. Stick saved by Smith and that ends up in the seats. Four minutes and 15 seconds left. These two teams meet once more in the regular season. It's here at the Spectrum on Thursday, April 4th. Over the last 19 games, the Islanders have won 11, lost six, and tied two. Bill Smith and Bob Myers talking about the upcoming playoffs, probably. No? <laughs> you know better, folks. A little blarney for you on St. Patrick's Day. Here are the Flyers trying to keep the puck in the Islander end and could not. LaFontaine starts out with it. At LaFontaine, carries it across the line, dropped it for Nystrom. His pass across is broken up, and Sinisano has a breakaway. Let's watch. No, sir, Bill Smith hung right with him. Sinisano and Potvan in the corner, and the puck comes loose. Out to Prop, who drills it into the catching glove of Bill Smith. Goodness gracious, three minutes and 50 seconds left in the third period. A break here, the score, Flyers five, Islanders three.
last time you changed planes in the Midwest, did it seem a bit like the Wild West? Well, next time, fly into an airport that feels like an airport and not like a stockyard. Fly Eastern to Kansas City. In Kansas City, you can stroll from one Eastern plane to another without being trampled and make connections to Seattle, San Diego, Tucson, Phoenix, or 11 other Western cities. So fly Eastern through Kansas City and break away from the herd. A big mistake by the Islanders, covered up by Billy Smith. Ilka Sinisilo broke down the right wing side, got in behind the Islander defense. There he goes, number 23, as Dennis Potvin puts the head down and digs, trying to catch up to him. Sinisilo had too big a jump, but Billy Smith bails the Islander defense out again. Well, I should say the whole team in that case. Mistake was made by the whole team. Billy Smith bailed them out. Now the Flyers dump the puck in. Or Deneen brings it up the right wing boards. A long pass to Janssen at center ice. He's over the Philadelphia line. Corko goes to the net. The pass through away from Dvorak. Wayne Sutter shot is blocked on the short side. Corko battles around the boards. Got it to Deneen. Back to Corko. Roger Corko puts on the brakes. Trying to get it into Dwayne Sutter. Deneen reached for it and missed. And it comes out to center ice off pocket stick. This is Janssen taking Longevin's pass and backhanding it off the boards. Lindbergh out of the net, left it for Erickson. Around the wing, Longevin pinches in, tying up Tockett. The puck loose for Janssen, it dumped it wide. Now the Borak wheels it to the blue line. It gets away from Deneen and down into the Islanders' zone. Icing waved off. Longevin goes back. Both teams in the middle of player changes. Longevin pulled it away from the forechecking of Derek Smith. Got it to Pearson and Poulin and screaming in after it. Couldn't control it. Howe does. Howe's shot is grabbed by Smith. No further play. Buffalo continues to lead Winnipeg 2 to 1 in the other afternoon game. And as far as the Patrick division is concerned, a big matchup tonight. The New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils at Madison Square Garden. Take a look at the shots on goal in the hockey game 35 for the Flyers, 28 by the Islanders. Two minutes and 38 seconds remain in the hockey game. The Islanders trail by two. And I can't overlook the other game involving Pittsburgh and Hartford tonight. Penguins are three points back of the Rangers in the Patrick Division race for the fourth and final playoff spot. Ron Sutter just broke up the Islander play, forcing them back into their own zone. Pearson gives it to Trache here on right wing. Trache has dumped it in off the stick of Lindbergh. McCrimmon picks it out of the right wing corner. Brad McCrimmon. He opened the scoring for the Flyers this afternoon. Came to the blue line and shot it in, then goes for a rest. So quickly, the Islanders break out. Trache down the left wing. Shot it into the Philadelphia zone, and it's cleared high off a stick. And no further play. One minute, 58 seconds left. In regulation time, the Islanders trailing by a pair of goals. A year ago, the Islanders won the season series four games to three. They came in here today leading the season series three games to one, with one other game ending in a tie. Their only loss to the Flyers was in overtime at the Nassau Coliseum by a score of five to four. Is it trivial to bring up the fact that when somebody deserves an assist, and it was very evident, and they don't get it, never mind who scored the goal, I still... All right, watching the replay, that puck went off both goalposts. So they give it to Paul Boudelier, fine. But how about John Tonelli when he passed it back to Paul Boudelier? Good point. Brian Trache won the faceoff. He got it to John Tonelli. Tonelli passed it back to Boudelier. Now, if he's going to get the goal, it's in the net. Then he should have an assist. Hopefully, they'll correct that. Well, he may have a bonus, you know, at the end of the year for yeah. points. And I mean, if it was one point shy and it was a difference of 15 or 20,000 or 10,000 or 10 dollars, there's one he should get. We're talking more like a, well, there'll be a penalty here against the Islanders as Zezel was taken down. And Philadelphia with a minute and 20 seconds to go and a lead will have a bad advantage. Well, we'll get a good look at this, I'm sure. There's the fake. Dennis Potfan gets the arm out. God, that looked like Bill Barber for a minute. <laughs> looked like Zezel was off his feet before Dennis Potvan got a good piece of him. But either way, he's gone to the penalty box with a minute and 20 seconds remaining in the hockey game. Five to three, the Philadelphia Flyers lead over the New York Islanders. 
in a well-played hockey game. Not fan for tripping. Started to say you're sounding more like a player's agent than a general manager, 18. <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, looking at it from the standpoint that somehow we missed a couple of things on second replays here, and I, I'm trying to justify what I'm talking about, whether it be a goal or not. It's uh, by whom it's scored. But the fact remains that John Tonelli clearly passed the puck back to Paul Boudelier at the point after Trache had won the draw. You can read in or out of that, whatever you want. <laughs> the Islanders moving around a little now line up on this faceoff in their own end. Kortko went to pull it back from Zazel and has waved out of the faceoff area. You know, and he can't get mad at the linesman because his move was so obvious, even the linesman couldn't protect him. Latley took the draw, kicked it back to the point. That's Dvorak. Over to the right side. Crossman plays it in deeper. Sinisalo back to the point. Got it right back. Looks for somebody in front. Gave it to Peter Zezel. Out to Sinisalo. Fakes the shot. A little trouble handling the puck and recovers back at the Islander line. Over to Crossman with less than a minute to go in this game. Crossman. And it was drilled off the pads of Smith and up into the seats as Sinisalo fired one from the point. Good Fifth. stop. Excuse me, Jig. 54 seconds left. Go ahead. <laughs> Good stop by Billy Smith on that shot. Sinisalo did not stop it. Dvorak passed it across. Excuse me. And he drilled it. Smith using his right foot. Very agile move. Kicked it away. Philadelphia Flyers leading the Patrick Division. They were leading by four points coming into this afternoon's game. They'll have stretched that to six. Rossi shot one that hit the referee and now is dumped out into the center ice all. Picked up by Prop. Checked by Bossy. Prop recovers over on right wing. It's across the Islander line. It's slowed up by Longevin's check. Going for the puck is Deneen, and he backhands it down into the flyer end. 30 seconds all that's left. And the Philadelphia Flyers will have run up back-to-back -back wins over the New York Islanders and stretched their streak, or their lead, I should say, to six points over the Caps. As Eddie mentioned, they just hold on to the puck in their own end of the ice here and run it down. Crossman at the left side. Dvorak shoots it into the Islander zone. That's Klopp chasing it. Longevin reached for it. Klopp gets a stick on it, centered right to the stick of Longevin. He clears it with five seconds left. And this one goes into the book. It's a flyer victory over the New York Islanders. Your final score, Philadelphia 5, the New York Islanders 3. The Flyers are six points up on the Washington Capitals, leading the Patrick Division. Final score, Flyers 5, Islanders 3. We'll be back with a recap following these messages. Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Uh, give me a light. Uh, Bud Light. Hold this, will you? So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light! Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. And it's the Islanders scoring the only goal of the period. It appeared to be Mike Bossy. They say it's Paul Boudelier. In any event, it comes at the 10.50 mark. If it stands up as a goal by Boudelier, it'll be his 12th of the season. If they do indeed change it to Mike Bossy, it'll be his 55th of the year. And maybe, just maybe, John Tonelli will get an assist. It's the only goal of the third period, making the final score 5-3, to three, favor of the Philadelphia Flyers. And as we said, they have stretched that lead. They are a very impressive hockey team, Eddie. They just keep coming at you. They do, Jigs. They've got a lot of good hockey players on that team. We talked about it throughout the whole hockey game. And if you were briefly going to try and summarize what went on today, it's really that Philadelphia just had more better players on the ice that played throughout three periods better than the Islanders did. The Islanders, of course, suffering the loss of Brent Sutter. I mean, Brent Sutter would take up a lot of the slack just himself in that he does so many things for the Islanders from the face-offs, defensively scoring goals. So he's a big loss to the team. And, and as this goes along, it could prove to be a bigger loss than what a lot of people think. Yes, indeed, it could. We mentioned the fact that both teams played yesterday. The Flyers, I guess, really some rationale at an easier time of things in Toronto than the Islanders did at home against Washington. That uh, may have entered into it as far as stamina in the third period just a little bit. 
bit, but you can't alibi or using that. No, there's no way you can make an alibi. I think if you're looking at it statistically also, you'd look at two shorthanded goals that the Islanders gave up. That's not the kind of games that the Islanders uh, uh, do. That's not the kind of things they do. And giving up two shorthanded goals in one game has hurt them a great deal. Coming in against a team like Philadelphia, that's a strong defensive team. They know that if they got three goals, roughly, that they would get a tie. If they got four, they might be able to win it. This way, they got three, but they didn't come close. They've assured themselves of a third-place finish in the Patrick division. There's an outside chance, but, of course, the bottom would have to fall out completely in Washington for the Islanders to move into second place. They know that they're nine games left now before the playoffs begin. There's still some work to be done, some areas to uh, shore up in, and I'm, I know that uh, Al Arbor and Brian Kilray will be working on that. But as you pointed out, the loss of Brent Sutter is going to be very difficult for them to overcome. Now they go home against the very improved hockey team. They are, Jigs. And of course, if you're looking for something positive on the uh, on the Islanders' side, you have to look at the fact that Greg Gilbert uh, has a potential of getting back. Clark Gillies is very close. I'm not sure about Matt Saline. They'll only hope that he gets back as soon as possible. And then, of course, the big one, of Brent Sutter. You just We can only hope that what we're told, being a bruise, is all it is. Then, of course, he should be back within a two weeks. You can only hope. You're right. Once again, from Philadelphia, the final score here the St. Patrick's Day in the afternoon is the Philadelphia Flyers 5 and the New York Islanders 3. New York Islanders hockey has been brought to you by Bud Light, the beer with a clean, distinctive taste worthy of the king of beers. Bring out your best with Budweiser Light. The good old skies, the old New York, New Jersey, and Southern Connecticut. By Mobile Super Unleaded Gasoline. Mobile Super Unleaded, it's really powerful. By the people of Eastern Airlines, they earn their wings every day. By your 53 participating Tri-State Toyota dealers who invite you to compare quality, value, and price. It's Toyota, not the other guys. By National Westminster Bank USA, the people and the resources you need today. By express mail delivery from the post office, we deliver excellence for less. And by Canon, proud to be the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography and the official camera of the New York Islanders. Be sure to be with us here on WOR-TV Sports on Thursday, March 28th, when the New York Islanders meet the Quebec Nordiques at the Coliseum in Quebec City. Today's game was produced by Jeff Mitchell. Associate directors for today's game were Electa Brown and Aldo Ferenzi. Graphics coordinator was Steve Olbaugh. The commercial coordinator was Curtis Reed. Today's game was brought to you through the facilities of Vanda Communications. This has been a presentation of WOR-TV Sports.